Hi, buddy. This is Mr. Polly, and welcome to Podcast 5.3, where we're going to learn about molecular polarity. We're going to determine the polarity of molecules, difference between polar bonds and polar molecules, difference between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces, define the term dipole moment, momentary dipole, and induced dipole. Um, describe and distinguish between the three types of intermolecular forces, dispersion, uh, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonds, and figure out what types of forces exist. So let's get started. Ionic covalent metallic bonds are not intermolecular. They are intramolecular and much, much stronger. So my example of this, intra means within. So for example, if I'm laying down here and I'm sticking my hand down, I'm on a cliff. There's my legs. And I'm on a cliff and I'm grabbing on to Chris's hand. Chris is falling. Here's Chris. Ah, hold on. I won't drop you. Don't drop me. Okay, he's got a really big forearm. That's Chris. Okay. Now, I would always wanted to see in some movie where... Um, now, what always happens is they drop them. The good movies, they drop and they fall. Ah, right? And then poor Chris falls down and goes Chris flat. What I always wanted is to see, like me and my jumbo arm, and holding on to Chris, Chris's arm... But Chris then falls. One arm, Chris. Uh, his arm doesn't separate, okay? An arm, boy, is that a terrible arm. An arm is within a body. So that would be an intramolecular force, like an arm is within. Inter means between. Like our grips are between two people, okay? So this is an intramolecular bond. It's hard to dislocate that finger. Ouch! But an in, that's an intramolecular bond, so it's hard. But enter, it's easier to break those things. A bond, or, bond is polar if it's change in electronegativity is 0.5 or more. Now, what's interesting about this is that would also include ionic, and ionic is super duper polar. Okay, a bond is polar if it's change in electronegativity is 0.5 or more. A molecule is polar if the bond is polar and the shape does not cancel polarity. Star, 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 star. Test question. Woo, look at that. Woo, 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 woo. That is one of your test questions. So, CO2, for example, if I were to draw the Lewis dot structure for CO2, hopefully you can draw it this fast, but I don't expect to be there yet. So, double bond here. If I look at C to O and look at the electronegativity difference, I see that that is more than 0.5. So, oxygen is 3.5, carbon is 2.5, that difference is 1. So I'm going to indicate that oxygen is more negative by putting an arrow there. And for this bond, an arrow here. So is this side over here on the left the center of negativity, or is this side over here on the right the center of negativity, or is it somewhere in between? Well, it's somewhere in between. This is the center of negativity. Hey, that's the center of positivity, too. Okay, so it has polar bonds, polar bonds, right, because it's 1.0, nonpolar molecule, because... The negatives cancel out to be in the middle. Okay. NH3. Here's NH3. Now, this is N. H. 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 Okay. Now, looking at electronegativity differences, um, hydrogen is more positive than nitrogen. So, I point at the negatives. We point at the negatives. We point at the negatives. Or, if I were to use my deltas, delta positive, delta positive, delta positive. Delta negative, delta negative, delta negative. So I'll get rid of those arrows just because they're a little messy. Okay. okay. So the center of negativity is clearly right here. Center of positivity is down here. So you see if I average all three of those, it does not average out, out to be here. Not center. Where it is, the center of positivity is right here. I call that tickling the belly of the pyramid. Okay. So this has polar bonds. And it is a polar molecule. Polar molecule. Now if I look at CH4, and I go, huh, C to H. 2.5 minus 2.1 is 0.4. I don't need to do anything else. I know already. Looky, looky, looky. It is a nonpolar molecule. Okay? Now if I were to look, if I were to look um, at this, I would see that you know, I don't have to draw any of the arrows, so it's just nonpolar bonds, so it's a nonpolar molecule. Intermolecular forces are between molecules. They are weaker by a factor of 10 or so. 
So it takes 10 times the energy, I have this backwards, to break H to O as to boil water. So I apologize if you copied that down. 10 times the energy to break H to O, because you know water is HOH, and what keeps it from boiling is water is attracted to another water. Breaking that bond is 10 times easier than breaking this bond. Ouch. Okay. Dispersion forces are the weakest. Okay. All atoms have electrons. By chance, they are unbalanced. So if I had 100 electrons in here, is it possible that on this side I could have 52 and this side I have 48? And if that happened, do you see how this side would be a little bit negative for an instant? A little bit positive for an instant? And as soon as this is positive, the neighbor electron says, Hey, positive! My electrons want to go over there! Makes a little bit negative and a little bit positive. Positive over here, this one says, Hey, my electrons want to go over there! A little bit negative and a little bit positive. So it's induced. This one changed because of that one. This one changed because of that one. So it's kind of like the peer pressure of intermolecular forces. And that's pretty weak. Dipole dipole is permanent. It doesn't start off with some random act. It's a permanent positive and negative um, that attract. So this has polar molecules. So if you have a polar molecule, you have dipole dipole. If you have a nonpolar molecule, this actually happens with all molecules, but especially nonpolar. Hydrogen bond's the strongest. So what it really means is that it's superpolar. So if it's superpolar, that happens because I have H directly bonded to O. So that makes a very polar bond. Okay? And you can read that. Look at the pictures. How pretty. What type of intermolecular forces are in the following? This is H2. So this is a nonpolar bond. So it's a nonpolar molecule. So it has dispersion forces. Okay? And H right here. Check that. Oh, that's polar, right? It doesn't cancel, right? My center of positivity would be tickling the belly. We did that one before, right? So the center of negative, so let me draw my arrows. Bink, bink, bink. Center of positivity is right here. Center of negativity is right here. So it is polar, but it's not just polar. It's H bonded because I have N to H, okay? O to C. Polar bonds, but oh, looky, 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 non-polar molecule. So if it's nonpolar, it just has um, dispersion forces, dispersion only, and really H bonded and dispersion. But H bonding is the bigger one. And this one is this hydrogen bonded? No, because H is not directly bonded to O. C to H is a nonpolar bond. That's nonpolar for this part. C to O is polar. So if it's polar, it's dipole dipole. And then this is C to H. Remember I told you it's nice to know C to H is always a nonpolar bond? C to H is nonpolar, so it's dispersion only. Because if you have nonpolar bonds, you are a nonpolar molecule. What type of intermolecular force has the lowest boiling point? Lowest boiling point would be the weakest force. The weakest one is dispersion. Oh, greatest evaporation rate. Now, the lowest boiling point means it turns to a gas easily. So if it turns to a gas easily, that means it is not very attracted to itself, right? So if it's very weak, it will not stay together as a liquid. Greatest evaporation rate means it turns to a gas easily too. It turns to gas easily. Now why would it turn to a gas easily? Because it's not very attracted to itself. So that means it's the weakest is what we're looking for, which would be dispersion forces. I know I answered these in the wrong order, but highest melting point, that means strong attraction. What has the strongest attraction for intermolecular forces? H bond. Slowest evaporation rate means it stays a liquid the longest. And that means it is the, whoops, the strongest H bond. Review, polar molecules need both polar bonds and shapes that do not cancel. Very, very important. I bet that's a pod quiz question. 
No pairs often means nonpolar. Hey, I didn't mention that before. That's helpful. Class is 20 minutes of happiness because we have an assembly coming up. But really, we're about done here. So I will say that, and I will say...